Hey, Malachi here, pastor and founder of Life's Word Ministry, along with my beautiful wife, Christine. Welcome to our podcast. I pray that what you hear will encourage, enlighten, and enrich your life. You know, it's our endeavor to share a word with you that will help you to live hope and change, to draw you closer to our Heavenly Father, as well as strengthen your walk with Christ, using the Word of God as our foundation. I can't thank you enough for listening and sharing our podcast with others. And now, here's today's message. Welcome to the show tonight. I appreciate you, as always, for sharing some time with me as we walk through various Bible lessons. I pray that you're sharing this podcast with others, that they'll be able to be blessed as well. I don't want to sound like uh, many other pastors and teachers and ministers on late night infomercial shows. I'm excited. We're ready to get ready to get into this. Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't. I don't want to sound like that. <laughs> I am hyped though about the word of God and whenever I have a chance to speak and share with you, I do have a level of excitement. Even though I don't sound like a used car salesman barking at you each week. But down on the inside, it's electrifying when I read and study the Word of God. And I'm able to share with you. So tonight, we're going to be talking from Joshua 1. And I'm going to read the first 11 verses, and I know that you're going to be blessed by what God has for you tonight, because as I was preparing this lesson, he was just blessing my soul and renewing my vision and renewing my purpose and renewing where I desire to be in my life naturally and spiritually. And when you really lay before God, ask him to speak to you clearly, God will do that. While I was reading this lesson, he was really opening up my understanding in where I am right now and where I desire to be in the future. And I know that you're going to be blessed as well. And there's some things that God is going to reveal to you in the word tonight and I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be strong in your faith because as we read, God is going to open up to you where you need to be in your life. All right, so let's get started. Joshua 1, 1 through 11, and this is God's commission to Joshua. He says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you 
wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself, for in three days you will cross over the Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And as it's customarily done after a scripture reading, may the Lord bless you that hear his word. All right, you ready for it? Here it is. It's time to move. That's what God gave me while I was reading Joshua 1, 1 through 11. It's time to move. When I sit and I take assessment on life, you know, there's one truth about all of us right now. And that one simple truth is we are all at some particular place and point in our lives. That's pretty profound, isn't it? (laughs) But no matter the situation you are in or going through, the place we are at right now in our lives is due to an action we took that brought us here. And I'm here to tell each and every one of you that's listening to the sound of my voice. And I know that this might sound profound and prophetic, but it's time to move. But in our moving, there are three key elements we need to know and understand. Write these down. Here comes the lesson part of this. Three key elements we need to know and understand. Number one, we must understand the plan. Number two, we need to understand the power. And number three, we must understand the prize. Did you get it? One more time. Number one, we must understand the plan. Number two, we need to understand the power. And number three, we must understand the prize. In our lesson, in taking over the leadership position when Moses died, Joshua himself had to understand these three key elements. And before we can move into a new place in our lives. It is essential for us to know what it will take for us to move in and possess what it is that we desire to have in our lives. I don't know what you are desiring in your life right now, but if you put your complete trust in God's system, he will never fail you. Just like it stated in Joshua In the fifth verse, that's God's system. He said he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Our problem is we put our trust in the wrong systems. And one system we tend to put our trust in is in man's system. And we all should know that man's system has a long track record of failures. Look around. How good do you think man's system really is? It's not good at all. Many of you have experienced the failures of man's system. It can be very disappointing waiting on man's system, trusting man's system. You know how the government can be. The government is very slow in performing its duty for mankind. The legal system, it's not fair at all. It will make you lose all sense of hope in our society, in our government, in our legal system. It can be disheartening sometimes, even as a child of God. And here is one thing I need you to know as a child of God. You cannot become complacent in your walk with God. Why? Because God is a God of vision and movement. And to trust him, you need to trust his vision for your life. And you need to trust when he says move to move. God told Jeremiah that he knew the plans he had for him. Remember in Jeremiah 29 and 11, which meant 
He was not planning for Jeremiah to just sit around waiting for it. He had to take action in his life until it manifested. He had to move. And God is telling us the same, that we're not just to sit around waiting. After we prayed, we say we believe, right? Well, it's time to take action and move. Because I know and I realize that there is too much work to be done in God's kingdom just to sit around wondering what we should be doing. Have you ever caught yourself just sitting around and wondering what you should be doing in God's kingdom? I have. There have been times I've sat around wondering, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I to do? I'll go in the closet because that's where I pray and sit there and ponder, God, what am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do? What am I to do, Lord, with my life? But what does the Bible say? Matthew 9, 37 and 38 says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Although we all may be at different places in our lives and going through different situations, Jesus is looking for people who are ready to completely give their lives to him. And in order to do that, we must be ready to move. He said the harvest is ripe. But so many of us have become comfortable and content at the place where we are in our lives. And the trouble with that is if we become satisfied with being in such a place, we will never want to move. Getting comfortable in a place of stagnation is very unhealthy for one's business, for one's ministry, and especially for one's life. I don't know about you, but I hate feeling stagnated. I hate feeling complacent. The Bible says we're called to be laborers. Well, what is a laborer? A laborer is a person who does unskilled physical work for wages. But don't be a, don't don't allow the word unskilled to offend you. Let me direct your attention to the fact that God is looking for unskilled people who are ready to fully depend on him that is skilled in the area of faith and obedience. And these are two very important skills you need in getting ready to move. You need faith and you need obedience. It's one thing to have the faith, but then it's another to obey. We can talk about faith all day. I got faith, I got faith, I got faith, I got faith. But when God says it's time to obey, where's our faith? You have to have faith, yes, But you still need to obey. If God wants you to do something, you have to have the faith that he's going to see you through it. Obey his commandments comes by having faith that God will see you through. If God wants you to move, obey him and have the faith that he's going to open the door for you. So it's easy in some cases to have faith. But what about that crazy faith? when it takes some ridiculous amount of obeying God to exercise that faith. See, so they go hand in hand, faith, obedience, obey. You have to have faith. But before some of us can move, we have to decide if we are ready to leave the place where we are and go where God wants us to be. Oftentimes I hear people say, Lord, send me, send me, Lord, I'll go, I'll go, Lord, I want to work for you. I want to do your will, send me. But then when it comes to obeying God to go where he sends you, then all of a sudden now we're hung up in different places in our lives. And this is what gets us in trouble is because we are in an holding pattern And it's preventing us from moving from where we are right now to moving into where we need to be 
tomorrow. These places of hangups can really hinder our growth in God. Now, this is going to be a lesson to where you're going to need to write down a, quite a few notes. Let me give you a list of some places that we tend to get hung up in. You ready? Write this down. The place of worries. The place of depression. The place of brokenness. The place of pride. The place of finances. The place of lust. The place of all about me. The place of contentment. The place of laziness. The place of anxiety. The place of self pity. The place of sickness. The place of selfishness. The place of hatred. The place of sin. The place of familiar. The place of satisfaction. And the place of disobedience. These are some places we have a tendency of getting hung up in. Now, I know there are some other places that we get hung up in. But it would take us several hours to talk about the many places that we allow ourselves to get hung up in. These places cause us to be stagnant. These places causes us to be complacent. These places causes us stress. And we need to move out of these places. It's not easy. I understand that. We need help. This is why we go to God, because God wants us to move into a place of peace. He wants us to move into a place of joy. He wants us to move into a place of happiness. He wants us to be in a place to where he can bless us openly. But the only way we can do that is by identifying the places that we're in and acknowledging that we need God to move us out of these places. You may not realize this, but God is intent on completing his plan in the lives of his children. And nowhere is this intentional leading more evident than in the account of Joshua and the children of Israel entering the promised land. Why do I say that? Because as we embrace God's plan for our lives, there are many parallels that may be applied to churches and individual believers alike. As the Lord desires to move the church and those of us who are true believers forward, he will begin to reveal important information, information that is vital to our successful start, our continuance and completion of his plan in our lives. As God begins to move, we must be in a position of readiness. Are you ready to move? Have you put yourself in a position to be ready when God says move? It's a matter of paying attention and being prepared to follow his next command. Because we must fully follow his lead. And I'm firm in my belief that the best is yet to come. Before we can move forward from the place we are right now, we need to take a closer look at the three elements I mentioned in the beginning. And these three elements can be applied to any area of our life. The first one comes from Joshua 1, 1 through 4. We must understand the plan. How are we going to implement a plan if we don't understand a plan? And here's what I really love about God and his plan. After Moses died, God wanted Joshua to know that his plan for Israel had not changed and that the time had come for Israel to get ready to move. Many of us today, we want to jump right into a position and start changing everything day one. And my question to you would be, did you even consult with God 
about how he wanted you to lead. You have no idea what direction God has planned out for your life and you're already making changes. Have you even thought about has the person you're replacing finished their assignment yet? Have they died? All you have is a word that it's time to move. You don't even know if it's right now or later. Joshua was faithful to Moses for many, many years. Not just the 40 years out there in the back desert of the wilderness. He watched how Moses led. And he watched how he was very attentive to God's every command. Even while the people were repeatedly disobedient, he saw Moses' faithfulness in leading. Joshua never once attempted to displace Moses' leadership. Even when Moses had grown old and couldn't keep up, Joshua remained submissive to his leader. Joshua waited patiently. And when it was time for Moses to leave the position, Joshua was, was faithful in his call to move. I can hear your grumbling now. Why I got to wait until he dies? I'm ready to move now. This is taking too long. I have all kind of ideas. That's why many of you are still sitting in your holding pattern. God is showing you that you're not ready to move yet. We got so many ideas, so many plans, just waiting to take over the helm. This is why we see so many businesses fail. This is why we see so many ministries close the door. This is why we see so many young men jump out there because they have all this zeal and excitement and they're not ready to move yet. God has to slow them down. God has to bring them back to reality and says, look, son, you're not ready to go yet. Yes, I called you. Yes, you do have a calling on your life, but you're not ready yet. Your ideas are good, but it's not time yet. Joshua was patient. He was learning all there was to learn about being a good leader because he knew that he was going to eventually take over Moses' leadership. I can only sit and imagine what Joshua could have been thinking or experiencing following Moses, learning about what was going on, learning the things of God, learning how to be obedient, learning how to be patient, seeing all these disobedient people, seeing all these miracles being performed, seeing and watching Moses go through what he went through. Joshua wasn't in a rush to be in front of all these millions of people. We're talking millions and millions of people. That took a great amount of faith that took a great amount of courage that took a great amount of wisdom joshua wasn't eager to just take over because moses was old and getting ready to die but god was preparing him god was making him and in his making he understood that he needed God more so than man because man was very fickle. When things didn't go their way, they disobeyed. When things didn't go their way, they grumbled. When things didn't go their way, they murmured. When things didn't go their way, they talked about the man of God. Them folk were something else. And in following their departure from Egypt, Israel had attempted their own plans. So many of us were tempting our own plans. But God's plan remained his will for his children, not their own will. Their will did nothing but deepen their sorrows. It's important to note that while much had transpired since Israel's failure to believe in God, his plan was still waiting to be accomplished. 
I find it amazing that when we get out of tight situations or free from our distresses, we tend to want to do what we want to do outside of God's plan. They came out of Egypt. They were freed from slavery, came out of bondage. And now all of a sudden they want to do plans the way they want to do plans outside of God's plan. In light of this, we need to remember that there are many plans about success, fulfillment, finances, family, and future destinations. But these are frequently based on our incomplete knowledge and understanding of God's plan and our needs. Do you really understand God's plan for your life? Do you really know what his plan is for your life? It's not just about what you want. It's not always all about our needs. Please hear me on this, my friends. God always has the plan based on his complete knowledge and understanding. For the children of Israel, it was one to get out of Egypt. Two, cross the wilderness. Three, enter the promised land. And four, live there experiencing his blessings. The plan that God has for us today is the plan to leave the former life, enter in a new life, live a fruitful life, and live experiencing his blessings blessings that's his plan for us right now let me repeat that just in case you didn't catch that now catch this God's plan for us today is one to leave the former life two enter into a new life three live a fruitful life and four live experiencing all of his blessings. All this must happen by being faithful and obedient to God's word. We need to understand totally God always has a plan for us. Well, that concludes our podcast for today. I trust you were blessed and enjoyed what you heard. Be sure to tune in again right here on Life's Word Podcast.